Hey Algebra 2, in this video we're going to be talking about factoring when a is greater than 1 and the difference of squares. Um, so let's start with the difference of squares. So remember the difference, or what a square is. A square is a number that's a perfect square, like 9, right? The square root of 9 is 3. So the difference of squares would be like x squared minus 4, because x squared is a perfect square, and negative 4, well, not negative 4, but, and 4 is a perfect square, right? Square root of x squared is x, perfect square, square root of 4 is 2. So the idea comes from still keeping the idea that like um, 1 multiplies to a times c and adds to equal b. So a times c is negative 4, but what's our b value? So because something's written there, you can think of this as x squared plus 0x. Right? So our b value is just 0. So what multiplies to be negative 4 and adds to be 0? That's going to be negative 2 and positive 2. So then, remember I can replace this 0 with a plus 2x and a minus 2x because these are equivalent. Bring down my negative 4, and I'm going to factor out the greatest common factors. The greatest common factor here is x, and I'm left with x plus 2. Greatest common factor here, remember we don't want that leading term to be negative, so it's going to be negative 2. Um, negative 2x divided by negative 2 is x. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. And then we factor out the greatest common factor, so they both have an x plus 2 in common and an x minus 2. Now, interestingly enough, so this is why it's its own thing, you're not going to have to show this amount of work for every single problem. Essentially, what ends up happening is um, every difference of squares problem Every difference of squares problem can be factored as follows. So if you have a squared minus b squared, these are both perfect squares it's going to factor to be a plus b times a minus b. So basically, um, you just need to determine what the what times itself equals this perfect square. You could think about it as the square root of a squared and the square root of b squared. And one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative because that middle value needs to be 0. So let's do just a couple more examples real quick. And you don't actually have to show that much work. So if I have x squared minus 81, well, this is a difference of squares, so it's going to factor to be one's positive, one's negative. The square root of x is x. So it'll be x here, and square root of 81 is 9. So it'll be x plus 9 times x minus 9. And you can always check by foiling this out. And it also works if your first term is, has a coefficient that's a perfect square. So let's say I had 16x squared minus 49. Okay, so everything here is a perfect square and it's the difference. So 
Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of x is x. Square root of 49 is 7. So it'll be 4x plus 7 times 4x minus 7. And when in doubt, you could always put in a 0 here and solve just like normal. But the difference of squares, this works every single time. So now let's talk about factoring when a is greater than 1. So this is going to be very similar to what we did the other day and how I've been showing you this method. The only difference is there's um, like an extra step. So this is called factor by grouping, which is what I'm going to be teaching you. So 4x squared plus 11x plus 6. So we have an a value here that's 4. So the first step is to factor out any common factors, which we don't have any, right? 4, 11, and 6, not divisible by the same number. So then we ask ourselves, what multiplies to 11, sorry, what multiplies to a times c and adds to equal b? So that's still a thing. So what multiplies to a times c, so 4 times 6, and adds to equal b, which is our 11. Um, so what does multiply to 24 and adds to 11, 3, and 8? So now we um, replace our bx with the 3x and the 8x. So 4x squared plus 3x plus 8x, and that order doesn't matter, and then plus 6. And now um, we're going to focus on the two groups, again, just like I taught you in our last um, video. And what's the greatest common factor of this group? So the greatest common factor there is just x. And we're left with 4x plus 3. And then what's the greatest common factor of the second group? And that's going to be 2. Yeah, because 8 and 6 are both divisible by 2. So make sure you put the plus 2. A lot of students forget that. 8 divided by 2 is 4x, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So now we look at, okay, what do these both have in common? They both have 4x plus 3. So we factor that out, and what are we left with? We are left with x plus 2. So that's our final answer. And you know it's the final answer because nothing else can be factored out, which is why the first step is always to factor out your greatest common factor. So um, let's do, I don't know, one more example. Or we could do one, let's do one that's solving. So uh, let's do solve for the x intercepts. And I'll give you, I don't know, k of x equals 3x squared minus 2x minus 5. So when you're solving, you set y equal to 0. And then we're going to continue to factor this um, using grouping. So we can't factor out a greatest common factor. What multiplies to a times c and adds to equal b? So 3 times negative 5, and b is negative 2. So what multiplies to be negative 15 and adds to equal negative 2? So if it's negative, I know 1 has to be positive, 1's negative. So negative 5 and 3, right? So I'm going to replace this negative 2. Make sure you bring everything down so it's nice and organized. 
So minus 5x plus 3x minus 5. Okay, then we factor by grouping. So first group is 3x minus 5x and the greatest common factor. So again, we still bring down that zero in the equal sign. Greatest common factor is just x. 3x squared divided by 3x is 3x. Negative 5x divided by x is negative 5. Then we look at our second group and we factor out the greatest common factor. And this is interesting, there is none, right? 3 and negative 5. So but we still need to factor something out so that we can do the grouping. So we just do a positive 1. So it doesn't change. And we write 3x minus 5 because these divided by 1 are the same. Now we can factor out the greatest common factor. They both are divisible by 3x minus 5. And we're left with x plus 1. So that's the factor part, but now we're solving, so we need to use the zero product property. So we set each product, right, equal to zero. So we have 3x minus 5 equals zero, x plus 1 equals zero, and be careful here, right, you add 5, I'll even show it. And then divide by 3, so x equals 5 thirds. Please keep this as a fraction, especially when it's divisible by 3, because that's not a nice number. But I asked for x-intercepts, so I need to rewrite this as a coordinate point. So it'll be 5 thirds comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. So there you have it. That's difference of squares and factoring when a is bigger than 1.